want to read a text that I received. Don't even know this lady. Hi Wanda, I just want to take a minute to introduce myself. I'm from Sherbrook area and a member of the Beluga group there. I just wanted you to know that I am 100% pro Beluga in an area where everyone wants them there. There is no community divide like you are feeling. The passion you are feeling about saving your water is what we feel about saving the whales and having them come to Shearbrook. Take them to Shearbrook. My name is Dr. Stein. I am the president of the Eastern Shore Wildlife Association. And we as members of the wildlife are not fully qualified to judge what is right or wrong with those whales. But we have a few questions we'd like to have answered from that lady there. How many whales is there in captivity in Canada? How many whales are in captivity in Canada? Yes. There are at least 50 beluga whales, one orca, and one white-sided dolphin. But all the orcas or beluga whales are headed this way. No. Well, where are you going to put, you're going to put eight here. Yeah. Where are the rest going? That's not our business. Oh. That's marine land of, of Canada's business. Okay, so now they're coming from the U.S. I don't know. They could be. It, it, as I you mentioned earlier, we do not yet have identified those whales who would be candidates for the sanctuary. So if I could answer you, I truly would, but I just can't. But, our, but, our, but the commitment on the numbers who would ever be here are the five to eight we said. Yeah. And that right. we're not looking to expand that to a number beyond that. If we're, that's your question. It, it just seems to me like it's a lot of time and money spent for just five to eight whales mm -hmm. when you have 250 whales in captivity. Right. And it is. And the, the model that, that we are following in, in the mission statement that we go over rather quickly in the beginning is that this is creating a model sanctuary which will demonstrate how this can be done so that over time in other parts of the world, the model can be followed. And you said that if the nets fail through ice or whatever, because the water is grazing here, the extreme, the whales are gonna stay around? That is the experience that we've had elsewhere. It is what the data suggests. Then why do we have the nets in the first place? It's a good question, and it's because we do want to have an area that we can control and that we can permit, and were we to go to any agency and say, we just want to bring a bunch of whales in, but we're not going to confine them at all, we would never get a permit. Right. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's pretty much all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. I have a couple more questions here. Uh, does noise and loud sounds bother the whales? In certain decibel ranges of their hearing, noise can have an impact on the whales. So dynamite blasting would affect them? The work that is planned for the quarry, if that's the discussion, if that's where you're going, is we have looked at that and looked at the distances with which it would come and how it would impact the whales. And at this point, the data we have suggests it will not, but that is an issue that we would continue to be looking at as we move into the further studies of this, because when we were here before, the quarry one hadn't been approved. It has been now, and that has to be looked at more seriously. Yeah, so I was wondering, because I know they're going to blast and take ships, and dust is going to fall. Where's that going to lead? So no, we don't want it. We get, we get the whole thing to stick to much room. You do. You know, that's exactly right. Yep. Thank you. Now, Thank you. Let, me, let me come back to what's been said a couple of times. Oh, you're going up here. Well, he's going up. But anyway, let me say it anyway, and then you'll have your turn. But I don't want to put anybody on the spot. But I think most of you either know or have found my email address, cvinick at mac.com. It's easy. If you are willing to participate, and it is this group, this committee, if you're willing to participate in a small group 
in a committee to try to see if we can resolve issues and move forward in Maladash, in this site, then we're interested in participating with you. But you have to tell us. I mean, I can't pick out names, and I think it's inappropriate to ask tonight for who would want to or whatever. But you can find me. You can find Lori. My email is easier to remember than hers. But you can find us. And I would ask you to do that in the next couple of days if you're willing to continue this conversation in a collegial way. We have said from day one, we don't want to force anything on any community. And frankly, we're powerless to do that. We couldn't do it if we wanted to. So that's not our intent. But we, you know, we do believe in the time that we've put in here and all that we hear. And if there are people who are willing to join us in that for a few weeks, have some more meetings, we come back, we sit down and we do this, we understand every issue, we try to see if there's a solution. If you're willing to do that, tell us. Yes, sir. Hi, first whale meeting that I went to, we were told that if you did not have the community support, you would not go forward. Is this what we call community support? Because to me, the, the, this is not the support of the community. Or are you just going to continue to try to wear us down and wear us down until finally there's few enough of us that show up at your meetings that we can say, oh, look at that. We've got the community support. Well, I don't think that that is what we have demonstrated we're doing or that we have said we're doing. So rather, what I'm saying is we're not looking for another big meeting. We're not looking to do this again. And if there are people who are willing to work with us, we'd like to know that. And if there aren't, we'll clearly know that because no one will respond. Thank you. David. David, you're up. 